Hello everyone, uh, this is an addition to lecture 2 for Altium. Um, I'm going to show you how to find parts and stuff like that uh, to be able to find the data sheet and collect the information that I was just mentioning in lecture 2. Uh, to do so, for example, we want resistors. We go to DigiKey or another vendor website like LCSC or uh, Mauser, but uh, we search resistors. Let's say we want chip resistor, surface mount, we choose that. Now, let's say you want a 10 kilo ohm resistor. What we will do is go ahead and find the resistance that we want, which is 10 kilo ohms, uh, right there. And we want some of this stuff that doesn't matter for us, like who made it, what is the packaging like, and stuff like that. What we care most about is the resistance, Sometimes the composition of the material that is used, but most importantly the size of the component. Uh, so I'm just gonna choose a 402 or a 603, or uh, actually I'm just gonna. You have like common options like 402, 603, 805, 1206, different shapes and sizes. So I'm just gonna choose 805, um, and I believe that's all I'm going going to choose. As you can see, it's 481 options. Typically, we want to have the in stock uh, check marked as well as active. That means the components are still being made and they're currently available to be able to buy. Now, you get a bunch of resistors from different companies with different other characteristics um, with different prices. Uh, you can choose what price range you want and all that kind of information. So. Uh, here it shows basically how many components are immediately available to buy, which company made them, and basically other characteristics, temperature coefficients, stuff that like in our club we don't really um, care about, uh, but uh, some other companies and um, places that you are going to work at might need you to like look into those in more details. Uh, so let's say we want um, we want this resistor from Vichy Electronics. Now you open the component and you see a bunch of information here. The stuff that we talked about in last lecture on how you can fill in the information in the properties of the component. Um, so the way we do it, we have the design by, which I put my own name there. We want the data sheet. Most components have a data sheet link. So you just open the data sheet. It's the data sheet for the component. What we usually do, we copy this link in the value section of the data sheet parameter in the properties of the component. Um, and we have other stuff, such as DigiKey, in this case, is the vendor, and DigiKey part number will be the vendor part number in the section that we defined. The manufacturer is Vichy, and the manufacturer part number is this code here. And that's how you basically fill in those fields as well as that, you have the description. Now, in our club, we put the description in the place of comments for each component, and we put the detailed description in the description com parts of the component itself in Altium. So we basically copy this to the component se comment section of the component and this one to the description section. And that's how you basically complete all the information on the D on the schematic library that you made, the component that you made. Um, now, Altium lets you to have a live update of the components if you have the correct part number from the correct um, uh, vendors and everything, but we don't use that feature really. Uh, just wanted to show you how you can find a component. Um, for example, the other component that I was going to show you is the Atmega Mega 32 U4. I'm just going to search it up. I know it's an embedded microcontroller, so and I know we are going to choose one of these. Um, so something like that. Uh, now you see the component name, the, the part number, the manufacturer part number, all of those has changed, the description for it, the detailed description, all of those has changed shows the pricing and everything. The one thing I was going to show you is the data sheet. The data sheet for a component like the resistor, I'm just gonna go back to the data sheet of the resistor. 
I think we chose one of these. V shade, yes. You see the data sheet is only a few pages, not long, and most of the data sheet regards in like different sizes and different shapes of the, the resistors. Not necessarily a whole lot of details on how it's made. You can obviously see what each uh, name, each what each uh, essentially um, letter and number in the manufacturer part number means by looking at a data sheet, for example. And you get that kind of information. But what I wanted to show you is how to figure out what pins have what pin name and what pin numbers go where. Uh, and how to group the pins and stuff like that when you're designing a complicated chip in your library like that. To do so, obviously you need a data sheet for many things to determine the features, how to program the chip, how to communicate with different parts of the chip, what pins are supposed to connect you to what parts and whatnot. Um, those are the stuff that we ha you have to care about when you are working with the chip and integrating into your design. For the purpose of designing a library and how to essentially make the component in your library physically, what you have to see and care about is the pin configurations. And most chips, almost all chips from good manufacturers have a pin configurations page that shows you from the 44 pins that they have, from pin 1 to pin 44, uh, so uh, basically what pin does what. Now, in Altium library components, um, your pin number here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, would be your designator for that pin. So you can just click on the pin, change the designator to 1 or 2 or 3, and for the pin name, you can choose whatever is written here. Now, you don't have to use the entire line. Some of them can get lengthy, like these ones. You can just write down the ones that you care about uh, or just don't write the extra information. That's up to you in terms of design choice. I believe in our club, we want you to put the extra information so we have an easier time figuring out which pin does what when looking at the design itself. But here you can see... Pin 1 is from port E number 6, pin 2 is a VCC, pin 3 and 4 are uh, D plus and D minus that goes to the USB, pin 5 and 6 are the USB ground and USB capacitors, and stuff like that. So you basically can choose the designator to be the number, the pin number, and the name, pin name to be the comments that you see in front of that pin. Now for a simpler chip like this, uh, the component names and everything is written in the front of it. Um, and that's how you basically determine which pin should be called what and where it should go. For example, if you want to group uh, all of your pins together to, into different parts, uh, as we discussed in lecture two, you can choose the same ports to be on the same part. For example, port B, port B, port B, they can go together, port C and C can to go together. You can separate the power pins if you like, you can se separate the USB section of the chip and all that kind of stuff that you can control yourself. Now, I'm going to just um, show you a more complicated chip just for reference on how it looks. This is the chip that we used as the main microcontroller on our robots. So it's going to look a lot more complicated I uh, just wanted to show you how it looks so you have a better idea on what to look for. Again, different DigiKey is still a vendor, the descriptions here are still holding. You can just click the data sheet to open it up and boom, uh, the data sheet is opened. And again, you have to just go and find the pinout configuration. This is a much more complicated chip, so the pinout configuration will be a lot bigger. Uh, the document is way longer, I believe it's like 2,000 pages, yes, it's 2,000 pages. Um, we have to go and find where the pinout is. The one that we chose is a 104 pin package, so it has 144 pins, and you have to define every single pin manually in the design. Um, and you can see it's a bit more complicated to figure out what is the correct pin number, and what is the pin name, and what each pin does. Essentially, what you have to care about 
is the fact that which chip we are using. Uh, there are three options, LQFP package, LQFP, LQ, LFBGA, and UFBGA packages. Those are, these are diff different packages uh, with different pin configurations. As you can see, the BGA packages, the pin numbers themselves have uh, letters and numbers. So C11, D12, E12, K12, F12. Um, this is not the chip that we use. The chip that we are using in our robots is this one. So basically your pin designator would be this number here or this character here, assuming if you use the other chips, but it will be this number here, which will be your pin number. And your pin description typically would be the primary characteristics of that pin. As you can see, uh, the pin 102 is port A0, pin 99 is port A1, pin 93 is port A2. And what that pin does, and what is the electrical characteristics of the pin? It's an I.O. pin. So you can define it as an I.O. pin when you're designing it. Now, if you go down, you can see all of it is from port A. Port A, I believe, has 32 pins. It's a big chip. So it has 32 port A pins. And you can that's how you can group them, for example. You can just put port A on the same part, and then port B on the same part, and then port C and then there's port D, and then there's port E and F. Now you get down here uh, to pin 3, 5, 8, 9, 83, 85, pins 30, 43, 72, like all of these pins here, they are power pins or reference pins. Uh, so you can like choose them as passive or power uh, to in, in when you're de defining the electrical characteristics of your pin and this is again the primary characteristics of your pin now for example you're putting pin 14 in or pin 1 let's say it's a it's port d0 and it's an io pin if you wish you can add the fact that this pin can also be a dac1 a pwmc1 a svi1 and all of those components so it's up to you to add how many ever information you want when you're designing chip and how you want to group and organize the pins together. But a good practice would be just like, for example, in case of this chip, put port A pins together, port B pins together, port C, port D, and all of them separated and the power pins separately. Um, I hope this data sheets and this tutorial give you a better, up, um, better view on how to figure out what to put in the components uh, so the, the, the comments and description sections of the properties of each component and what to look for when you're designing a new component.